views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Almost every home in the United States is adapting to the new normal. The new normal is this, working from home, finding creative ways to work from home, and how to deal with distance learning. With that comes some new stressors, emotionally, psychologically, mentally. And coming up on this episode of Perspectives, we go front and center with this issue with our friend, life coach, as well as career strategist, Elizabeth Carraza, joins us right here on Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyde. Relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with shines a light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. Make a difference in someone's life. Express what's in your heart and your mind. Share your perspective. And hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we thank you for joining us. As always, you can watch Perspectives every week here on Bronx Says Channel 67. If you have Verizon Files, that'll be Channel 2133 or anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. We encourage you, always share your perspective with us. How you can hit us up? Well, we got social media platforms. That's Bronxnet TV. My personal page is Darren C. Jaime. And then always DC Jaime 23 on Twitter as well as Instagram. And there you can get my perspective and see what's happening, get some inspiration as well as some information. Well, who'd have thought back in January when we first dealt with COVID-19 that the country would still be shut down today and still feeling the effects of things right here in September. Across the country, teachers, students, as well as parents are finding new ways to try to cope in the wake of COVID-19 with what's known as distance learning, and then also working from home. How are some of the creative ways that you can adjust to distance learning? How do you cope with the strategies of really working from home when you're an employer, uh, or I should say an employee, and then you're also got a family? It's a rough road to travel. So we found that there's some new stresses that come with this. Anxiety, disorders, stress, uh, yeah, a lot to deal with. My guest, It's going to help put some perspective on all of this. She's a life coach. She's also a career strategist and expert. She also is going to give us some advice on distance learning and how to deal with just being at home in this new normal. Elizabeth Carazza joins us here on Perspectives. And Elizabeth, good to have you again. I love being here with you, Darren. Thank you. Oh, thank you. As I said in the intro, I mean, who would ever thought? I mean, we're in September. I think a lot of us thought that maybe a month, two But now we're in September and new things are happening. Work, people are working from home, school, the kids are now being homeschooled with distance and virtual learning. Give us what you're hearing about just the emotional and the mental stress this is putting on a lot of families across America. Well, look, like you said, this is happening maybe longer than we had anticipated and we are in it for the long haul. And what I'm hearing from from clients and colleagues and people out there is that this is hard. It's tough. It's stressful. It's putting strains on relationships, on marriages, um, you know, relationships with children. So what I always like to tell and remind people is that you're not alone. Some people share their hardships and their challenges. Others put up a saw that everything's great and everything is fine. But just because people might not necessarily be sharing or talking about it, doesn't mean those challenges and tough times aren't happening behind closed doors. And things are happening behind closed doors. People are becoming frustrated, agitated, you know, kicking the dog and the cat. But uh, one thing that has to happen is really time management and schedule, right? I mean, when you've got kids, you got to manage that time because they've got to do their homeschooling. If you're working from home, that's a computer as well, and you got to do your own thing as well. So give us a little bit about how to make that effective schedule, given the fact that we've got so much busyness in our life. Oh, my goodness. We have not been busier, especially when you have children homeschooling 
in the home. So things that you want to do is make it easy on yourself. If the schedule is not working for you now and you're feeling a lot of frustration or that anger bubbling up inside, change course, change it up. And also what I like to tell people is give your, your kids some, some, some authority or, or let them be in charge of their own schedule. Give them that responsibility, especially if they're older. I mean, three or four is not going to be able to do that. But even at the age of five, like giving them a timer, giving them a clock, letting them know the times, helping them set a timer that, oh, you know, my Zoom call starting now, you know, giving them that kind of sense of feeling in charge and in control will really help. And then it will help you not have to micromanage them. Then you'll have time to do what you need to do Um like your job, which is extremely right. important. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, okay, we're talking about time. That's one thing. You got time on one component, but then you also have space, right? Some people just don't have the luxury of having a whole lot of space at home. I mean, I may have a small apartment. Uh, I've got the kids. And I know for me, look, I've got, a, I've got a pretty large space, right? But at the end of the day, I got books across the bed. I got the computer. I got this. You know, I, I know that most American families um, really are dealing with the challenge of space. How do you navigate space in, in these tough times? Okay, you gotta get really organized. You wanna set that schedule. If you're living in a small space and you know maybe a smaller apartment, <laughs> excuse me, you really want to set that schedule. Who is going to be in the living room? Who's going to be in the kitchen? Who's gonna have time in the bedroom? And, and maybe that's not you know the dream for you is to be working out of the bedroom, but we do the best we can with what we have. These are you know uncertain times and we just have to make it work. So get the schedule organized. If something is not working for you now, don't force it. If the kids are fighting like cats and dogs, separate them. Give them their own space or time to be in a bedroom if there is a shared bedroom. Or if you're not using yours, put them in there. Yeah. What are some of the common mistakes people are making right now? Because, um, you know, everybody's trying to adjust and pivot, but making some real <laughs> critical mistakes could also be something that a lot of people are dealing with right now, too. I think one of the biggest mistakes we're making is that we feel like we have to have it all together. Like it, it should be the, the way it was before COVID. I should feel as amazing and great and in control as I did before COVID. And that's just not realistic. Cut yourself some slack. Yeah, you might be feeling down. I think most of America is. And that's okay. What I would say is when you're feeling down, frustrated, or just like, I can't go on one more day like this, this is just nuts. You've got to reach out for help, whether it be supportive friends and family, not the friends and family that make you feel worse about you, about yourself after you've had a conversation, the ones that help build you up and really support you. Having someone like a coach like myself, or even speaking with a therapist, okay? If you're really feeling like, God, I, I might be getting depressed, like, uh, I really urge you to, to, to reach out to a therapist. Right. Well, let's go there for a moment because we know that September we deal with a couple of issues. Uh, one is also Suicide uh, Prevention Month, too. A lot of people have unfortunately taken their lives during this pandemic, feeling like life isn't going to get any better. But it begins with some very basic things that happen. And sometimes we overlook those things. And I think you talked about you having a therapist, using a therapist in a time such as this. Talk about the practicality, because particularly in communities of color, we know there's a stigmatism about talking to therapists and talking to somebody and having that counseling session. We're kind of taught to suppress and what goes on in the house stays in the house. But we know that that's not really good behavior. No, we don't want to do that. And remember, we're all in this together. Everybody is feeling this anxiety and stress and pressure, you know, financial pressures, pressure from family, marriages, all of this is happening. You're not alone. And what I urge you to do is, is reach out to someone that you love, someone that you trust. But also, if you're on the other end and, and feeling okay, be aware of others' behaviors. If someone is feeling, if you feel like someone else is feeling down or they don't really seem like themselves, ask them, share with them, you know, try to dig a little bit deeper. Um, to find out what's really going on. Because not a lot of people feel comfortable speaking about their feelings. Um, and in addition to that, those people that are living by themselves, it's very, very lonely. and can be very isolating when you're still quarantining or you're very nervous or you have a, 
a condition and you can't go out there even with your mask. I mean, there's all kinds of different scenarios. So please check on your elderly neighbors, your friends, your grandma, even in another state, because they are feeling it. Everybody is feeling it. And we, we kind of, yes, have to take care of ourselves, but really think about others in this environment. Yeah. Got to talk about how to manage that thing and manage, manage our families. And at the same time, being able to manage the stress. And so coming up after the break, talking with Elizabeth a little bit more about how to manage that stress right here on Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Jaime. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Just taking a quick break for a few seconds. Perspectives, Darren Jaime here with you. We are glad to have you sharing with us as always. And you can catch Perspectives every week here on Brock Says Channel 67. If you have Verizon and Files, that'll be channel 2133. And don't forget, go to the web at broxnet.org. There you can be able to interact. Uh, also, send us some perspectives. Let us know what you think. Um, you never know. We might talk about it right here on the show. But we're talking about how to navigate COVID-19. We're talking about September now. When we first started, it was March. A lot of people thought there would just be a few moments that we'd just be dealing with COVID-19. But the truth is, we're still in it and still dealing and still navigating. Schools have gone to remote and distance learning. Workplaces have said, don't come back to work. You can work from home. This creating an undue burden and some heavy stress. We've got my friend, uh, Elizabeth Karatz, who's also a life coach, career strategist, who's unpacking these things for us here. And uh, Elizabeth, I want to go to the workplace right now, right? I mean, look at us. We're, we're, we're even forced to come from our various places and still be able to bring shows and bring them virtually. People who are working are working virtually. And for some people, it is an emotional strain because guess what? We're not always technologically savvy. And so it takes a little bit more, it takes a little bit more energy, but then it also takes a little bit more patience. It does. It does. And be patient with yourself. I mean, people do understand, you know, for example, what I teach, you know, my clients and, and people who take my workshops or, or I work with is, you know, when you're doing Zoom and it's new to you or any type of platform, you can always reach out for help. Think about, okay, do I have a friend or family member who's really tech savvy? Maybe I could just reach out to them and they could give me some pointers. Go online and, and Google, you know, the do's and don'ts. And it's like, you know, things like having a clear background. Like you can see my background is, is very clear. You know, I, I cleared the counters off for this interview. And when you are either being interviewed or you're in a meeting or you're talking to your boss or colleagues, make sure your the background is tidy. It just gives you a more professional look, right? They, they, they want to see professionalism. They want working at home to work, right? And right. they want to make sure that you're still looking the part, dressing the part, and the, the environment is, is the part. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of Zoom disasters in my time. I mean, we've all seen some Zoom disasters since, uh, since March. People with, you know, uh, they got the full clothes on on the bot on the top at the bottom. They're not they're not there. You got kids yelling around in the background. <laughs> you got husband yelling about where's my food. You know all kinds of stuff. What can we do to kind of like you know uh, yeah. zoom proof ourselves or virtually proof ourselves from having these recipes for disaster, which will end up on like a viral blooper reel somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, Darren, I've seen it too. I've seen it too. Some of it's painful and some you have a good laugh because people can relate. People yeah. can relate. Like, so there are people in my home right now during this interview and I told them nobody on this floor <laughs> at the moment, you know, and if the kids were home, I'd coordinate with my husband to just take them to the park for, for you know, half an hour or however long this is because and I understand, I understand some people are in apartments and they're not in home, but even if you could, if it's safe, you know, get your mask on, if you step into the hall or just downstairs for 20 minutes, just so there are no mishaps, especially when it's really important and it's all kind of all on the line, like maybe a job interview. Yeah, and the job interview can actually go bad, given the fact that if you don't have the pat, the right background or you don't have the right interview, you only get one shot. And given the fact that you've got 22 million Americans right now who are literally uh, applying for unemployment, many for the very first time, the job market is so scarce. What is it going to take for a person to be able to stand out and above, given the fact there's so much competition, you've got so many other people out there who are trying to wrestle with the fact of just trying to land that job? Okay. Well, I've got a great example for you. So I, I got a message um, from an old colleague who was laid off and he messaged me in LinkedIn and said, I haven't talked to him in maybe eight years, but we had a good working relationship. We weren't necessarily friends outside of work, but I respected him. And he reached out to me and said, hey, I've just been laid off. Do you know anyone? Can you connect me with anyone? And I was so impressed. I was so impressed that he didn't let his pride get in the way. And now I've already connected him with, you know, one of your amazing producers, another great producer at Fox News, um, some other people. And it was just like, I just admired that so much. Put your pride aside. We have all been there. I've been laid off myself multiple times. People understand. And if, if they don't, no big deal. You just go on to the next person. Forget about what people think. A lot of people get in their heads and worry, oh, they're not going to think I'm doing a good job or I don't have enough money to put food on the table. Forget it. Forget about what people think right now. Just make it happen. Some of the best in the business have failed businesses or have been laid off. And now they're doing great and thriving. You've got to ask for what you want. Yeah, but, you know, I also think another conversation needs to be had, and you can share a little bit more about this, too, because with so many people being laid off, uh, maybe I don't get the job that I want. Maybe I don't get the job that I desire. But given the fact that, yeah, you know what? Times are rough, um, and you have to lay your pride aside. There's some adjustments that have to be made in terms of possibly just taking a job to be able to survive. It may not be the best job. It may not be what you want. But certainly you want to do something so that way you can stay in the area of survival. Exactly. And you know what? Remind yourself, this is not forever. This COVID stage, this high unemployment stage, this is not forever. If I get an opportunity I, and I, I can take it, I can make the money to put food on the table. And then, you know, as things start to get better, I can still start looking for something else while, while I'm working. Or I can let my manager know, hey, um, if anything comes up in this department, please keep me in mind because you don't get what you don't ask for. And remember, if you have to take a job that's several, maybe levels a bit lower than what you're used to, remind yourself, you know, you are honorable. You're doing an honorable thing. And this is not forever. And I will get back to that position that I really desire. For yourself, how have you navigated through this whole situation? I mean, all of us have had to make some adjustments. What's it been like for you? Some real adjustments, like just when, when there was shutdown was happening, we were literally moving houses, right? You know, we were in a rental and we, we bought our home and, and just with COVID and navigating that, that was crazy and that was stressful. Um, and then having two little kids at home, all of a sudden they're in school every day and then they're home. But it's just like every day, and I know it sounds cliche, but if you could write in a book or a journal, I'm actually not a journal a journaler, um, mm -hmm. so I just write it kind of in my, my at the top of my task list. You know, what are the three things I'm grateful for? You know, I have I have my health, I have my job, I'm still able to help people. Whatever it might be, write that down. You know, in every morning and think about what is your morning ritual. Because when often when we wake up in the morning, we're like, oh gosh, we're still all home together. You know, you kind of be like, oh my goodness, this, this is like, when is this ever going to end? So you want to start changing your mindset, okay? You want to think about 
What is the what is the good stuff that's happening? And what do I have to look forward to? No, the stage is not forever. Start planning things, even if it's just for next year, a vacation. Yes, if you're not able to travel, you can always push it back. But start to plan things you can actually look forward to. That is what I'm doing. Yeah, I think all of us have to like, you know, take a time and say, listen, plan forward, even though we're stuck right now. And there's a lot of great things that we can do. Uh, planning forward and there's a lot of great things that we can do now we just have to get out of that box and get out of that rut if you will all right listen let me take a quick break come back with you uh, elizabeth karatz is our guest here we are talking a lot about how to navigate this season particularly that we've gotten to the fall months and we're still in a place of virtual learning as well as for some of us working from home how frustrating that is overcoming that that's the topic of discussion here on perspectives coming right back with more in a few Hey, welcome back to Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you. And yes, we are talking about navigating COVID-19. Uh, as we are navigating, we're getting towards the fall. And many people thought that we would just be doing this in the spring. Well, we had to do it in spring, uh, the summer, and now, yes, we're moving towards the fall virtual learning uh, in many classrooms, hybrid learning in other classrooms for other people, not a return to work, but in turn, in fact, working from home. You've got kids at home. You've got family at home. You've got that whole dynamic. And I've got Elizabeth Karatza helping us how to navigate through all of this. And uh, when we put all this on the plate, uh, a lot of people, Elizabeth, say, I didn't see this coming, right? And I didn't see this coming. And now I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But let's be honest. I mean, for myself, I think from March all the way up until the end of July, um, I was working every day, practically, maybe only three days off. Um, and you become in a place of overload. But give me a little bit about that self-care dynamic, because many people do uh, miss out on this area because they think in taking care of themselves and taking care of others, they neglect in the area of self-care. Yeah, and a lot of people are not taking their vacation days or their or their time because they're working from home. And I want to urge people who have those vacation days to still to still take them. I mean, it is so important to reduce your stress right now. Stress levels are at all time highs. Okay, so what I recommend is look, some of the things you did for self care before COVID might not be working for you now. Like if you'd like to go to a class or you'd like to go to the gym. And that's not something you're comfortable with now or they're actually just closed. Um, you can do things online. I mean, for me personally, I need to take a walk every day. I, it helps clear my mind. I mean, in studies show, walking and, and just that momentum moving forward really helps us uh, health wise and also to stay more positive. You know, tell, saying um, affirmations or, or things, thinking positive thoughts or calling someone that you haven't reached out to in a long time or, or listening to a podcast that is upbeat um, or even like your show, Darren, you know, um, really, really helps with stress levels. So you need to change it up if things are not working for you. Yeah, I mean, doing something different is sometimes hard. And I think sometimes the biggest problem is making that adaptation to change. Um, and sometimes we change and it's too late. Right. And I think that but while we're in this right now, there's a great opportunity for people to really say, you know what, if it hasn't worked before, maybe I try something different. Maybe I do something different. Maybe I try to reinvent myself because what I am finding through COVID-19, I'm sometimes I'm on social media, sometimes I'm just watching or, or even driving certain places. I'm watching people who weren't entrepreneurs now all of a sudden become entrepreneurs. I'm watching people who've never done some things before really try to reinvent themselves because the COVID-19 pandemic is not allowing them uh, to let any grass grow up under their feet. Exactly. Some of us do have more time to think about what do I really want to be doing right now? If you're not happy with your career or the job that you're doing, now is the perfect time not to make rash decisions, but to really think about what is it that I want to do? What excites me? And when I say that to people, people sometimes people say, I have no idea. Well, I want you to write a list. I want you to put this on the front burner and start to think about 
oh, you know, is there anybody that I envy? Like what job that they're doing? Maybe I could do something like that. You know, what fulfills me in a perfect world? You know, if there was no obstacles, what would I be doing? Start making a list and writing some goals out for yourself and then scheduling them in the calendar because what gets put in the calendar is what gets done. Right. We often heard, you know, in terms of trying to find out your life goal, what is it that you would do that if you never got paid for it, you would do for free, right? What is that? And then beginning to chase after that. But I think so many times we put the dollar sign, where's the income coming, what's this coming, that we actually just cross these things off and we put them on the list, off, or, or, or I should say on the shelf, and when we have it on the list and on the shelf, and unfortunately, never to return again, right? Because we feel as though we lack certain things in order to bring that dream or that idea come forward. No, we can do anything that we want. So start talking to people who are in that profession, who own that business, who are doing that job. And if you don't know someone, start asking friends and family, look, I've always dreamed of doing this, or I'd love to talk to somebody in this field. I've always wanted to do it. Do you know anyone? You have to ask for what you want and get an idea. Maybe they'll tell you, um, people reach out to me all the time about, you know, having been a journalist and what it's like. And I love giving people advice. So don't be afraid to reach out to people. But also, again, it's that mindset. Well, why can't you do it? I mean, do you have limiting beliefs, beliefs that are not necessarily true? We all do. But if you get a strategy together and you could simply start with making that list of things that you'd love to do, things that fulfill you, things that excite you. And of course, you don't have to quit your job tomorrow, but you still have your job and you could start doing research, do your research, talk to people and maybe start doing it slowly, 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 like a little side hustle. Yeah, I mean, it's it, uh, the bottom line is it's doable. It's achievable. Listen, real quickly, probably got just a little bit less than a minute, but give me uh, your final thoughts as to what you think we might be seeing coming up in the near future as we try to navigate all of this. Okay. So look, remember, you got this. You can do this. It's normal right. to feel a bit down. It's normal to have these hard times. But what is going to help reach you out of this is having people that support and love you and that you can vent to and they, they, they will give you that support back. But also start to think about what is it that I really want to be doing? How can I help myself? You need to put yourself at the top of the priority list because if you don't, how are you going to be your best self to help others? Put you first. All right, Elizabeth, we got to leave it there. Elizabeth Carazza, life coach, career strategist. Look, I'm going to take that for a second. Tell people how they can get in touch with you. Okay. Well, you can reach me on my website at elizabethkoraca.com. And all social media is at elizabethkoraca. Elizabeth, thank you so much. I really, uh, we always enjoy having you. I enjoy having you bring that conversation because I think it's much needed. It's helping people in a time and a place and a space that some of us never saw coming, but we definitely need the help to get through. Elizabeth, thanks so much. Thank you. I love being here with you and all your viewers, Darren. All righty, Elizabeth Carazza, our guest here on Perspectives. Want to let you know, listen, we thank you for watching the COVID-19. We're in the midst of it, but we want you to know that even though we were in the midst of COVID-19, we can make it, we can press through, we can make a difference. If you just follow some very simple steps, don't allow it to keep you down. Get up, shake it off, make, what, make the best of today, and do something about it. You heard Elizabeth? That's my perspective. Listen, for all of us here on the Southern Perspectives, I'm Darren Hyman saying take care, God bless. Be sure to share your perspective with somebody else. You just don't know. It might make a difference in somebody else's life. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Take care, everybody.